Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. We magnify you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, you tune in. Hallelujah. Go ahead and share the video feed tonight. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you all to our leadership and believers training. Our leadership and believers training. Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you all for tuning in today, tonight. Hallelujah. It won't be before you long, but I do have some things that I want to talk about tonight that I believe that will be very beneficial to you, that can truly be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. So I want you to grab your Bibles, your notebooks, and you're turning with me to Hebrews 4 and 12. That's Hebrews 4 and 12. Hallelujah. And if you're here, do me a favor, just share it. Hallelujah. Let's share this feed tonight. Let's get the count up tonight. There's so many people needs to hear what the Lord has have to say in these hours, at these times, when there's so much going on. We need to hear from our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Again, we're going to, our base scripture is going to be in Hebrews 4 and 12. And as you're turning, I'm going to pray. Precious Father, we come before your throne. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for all the leaders who showed tonight. And I thank you, God, for all of the leaders to God that are listening, all of the believers that are listening, all of the believers that came. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for this training. I thank you, God, for you teaching and showing us, oh God, what it is that we need to know in order so that we can be better, that we can be greater, that we can fulfill the purpose that you've placed on our lives. I thank you, Lord God, for being our Lord. And Lord, as I decrease, I pray that you increase. I pray to God that you use these lips of clay to say what it is that you need to say, to do what it is that you need to do. I'm asking that you have your way. I pray that I get out of the way so that you can have your way. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're getting ready to do. Continue to bless this house. Continue to bless your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My subject tonight is that I want to talk about how and why we should choose people that is willing to help us carry the vision God gave us. Amen. I want to talk again to you about how and why we should choose people that is willing to help us carry the vision that God has given us. In Hebrews 4 and 12, our base scripture, we find these words. It says, for the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit, the completeness of a person and of both joint and marrow, the deepest part of our nature. Here's the part I want to talk about. Exposing and judging the very thoughts and the intentions of the heart. That's all the things that we know 
that we understand that all things are before God. All things are naked and exposed to the eyes of God. Only the thing, not only the things that we do, but also the things that we think. Not only the things that we do, but also the things that we think. We look to Christ, Jesus Christ, which is our example in all things. As you know or may not know, Jesus chose 12 disciples to follow him as he fulfilled his purpose and vision from the Father. And I want to pause here because I want us to understand this word disciple. The word disciple means a follower or student of, of a teacher or leader. Again, the word disciple means a follower or student of a teacher or a leader. So with that being said, a good disciple is one that you know, that they know, I'm sorry, how to follow, willing to learn, and a student. As a leader, one of the things that is very important that as you lead, as you guide, as you put your team together, one of the things that you have to be very, very cautious of is selecting people that has these characteristics. These are the things that we should be looking for. Not outward appearance, not because they say that they are experienced, not simply because we think that they can fit the bill, but do they really? Now this is deep, and the reason why this is deep because I know that there's some single leaders, and you will find that a lot of these characteristics that I'm speaking of is some things that you ought to look for in a mate as well. These are some characteristics that are extremely important that you can take and use in order when it comes to selecting or being selected. Does that make any sense? Remember disciples, students, teachers, leaders are not picked by the outward appearance. Why? Why is that important? Because outward appearance can be manipulated to fit into places that they don't qualify for. Does that make any sense? Somebody write that in the comment for me. Outward appearance can be manipulated to fit into places that they don't qualify for. So you gotta, you gotta get this now. And why is this important is because I found that a lot of times that when I enter to a room and I enter my rooms and I got my jeans on and I got a, I got a little t-shirt on or whatever, now no one knows who I am. And it's, once my title is being is, is, is expressed, all of a sudden the outward appearance of the people that I was with all of a sudden start to change. Mm -hmm. And it, what it is, they're trying to fit the bill of saying, okay, since he's this, I'm gonna act like that. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe how many people act like a certain way in order to get into your world. So many people act a certain way to get, into, get on your team. Mm -hmm. So many people that's on your team act a certain way in order to stay on your team when God is calling them off your team. So we have to understand and recognize that people manipulate their outward appearance into and so they can fit into the place that they don't qualify for. I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel 16 and 6. 1 Samuel 16 and 6. And it says this. It says, So it happened when they have come, he looked at Elab, the eldest son, and thought, listen to those words, he looked at the, he looked at Elab the eldest son of Jesse, and he thought, the word he thought, surely that the Lord anointing will be, be, will be on him. Based on what he saw, based on the outward appearance, he thought that God would truly choose him to be the next leader of Israel. Mm. Now, now, this is why this is important 
Because as leaders, we can't choose people based on what we see on the outward appearance alone. Okay? We can't do that. But listen to what the Lord said in 7. He says, the Lord said to Samuel, I don't want you or do not look at the appearance or at the height of his stature. Because what you selecting, God has already rejected. He said, I have rejected him, for the Lord sees not as man see, for a man look at the outward appearance, but the Lord look at the heart of the man. It's important to understand why is that so important? Why is it that God look at the heart? Can I tell you? God look at the heart because the insides and the intentions of a man cannot be manipulated by that man. In other words, what's in you is in you. So you can't manipulate what's on the inside of you, but you can manipulate what's on the outside. Does that make any sense? So God can see your heart. So we have to stop looking at the outward, the manipulation part, and start to look at the heart. What is truly in this individual's heart? What is their intentions? Why do they want to be on my team? Why do they want to be in my circle? Why do they want to be close to me? Why do they want to be my mate? Why is this individual so want, want to be get so close to me? What is their attention? What is why why is they want to do what they're trying to do? Mm -hmm. Believers and leaders, as I told y'all last time we was together, nothing worse than having someone on your team or part of your team where you can't count on them or you are unsure of their intentions. Mm -hmm. Nothing worse than having someone around you that you don't know their intentions mm. or you're unsure of their intentions. Now, this is, now, whether their intentions are good or bad, it doesn't really matter. What matters is I don't, if, you don't, if I, I don't know the intentions. See, it's one thing to know if it's good or bad, but it's another thing to know that if I don't know it at all. Mm. So it's okay to know that their intention may be bad, yeah. but it's not good to not know the intention at all. Does that make any sense? Amen. Okay? So, we must be, we must know that they are willing to learn and that they can follow. And we cannot expect people to follow us if we're not following Christ. Amen. Does that make any sense? So, I can't expect you to do what I'm not doing. Amen. As a leader, I, I, I set the example. I set the bar. So if I'm going to live a certain type of way, then I expect you to act that way as well. Because as I follow him, you following me, and we all following Christ. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Jesus chose 12. The Bible says out of those 12, one of them was a the devil. Turn with me to, the, to John 6 and 7. 6 and 70. 6 and 70. I'm going to show you something here. Now, this is important because Jesus, although he chose Judas, he also knew the intentions of Judas. Now, this is funny because when, when, when we think about this, a lot of people will say, well, I would have never chose them in the first place. But you have to get this because Judas, even though his intentions is bad, God knew that although it was bad, it was going to work for the good of Jesus who would have, who would be betrayed by him later in order for him to make the ultimate sacrifice for our salvation, right or wrong. Uh -huh. So this is why that's important, okay? So let's look at this. 70 says, Jesus answered them and said, did I not choose you, the 12 disciples, and yet one of you is a devil? He was aware of what was around him. He knew the intentions, or he knew what was what who what the the, the the plan and the strategy was of one of the disciples that although was with him was not really with him. Now he was speaking of Judas, 71 says, the son of Simon Iscar, for he was the one, he was the one of the twelve disciples that was about to betray him. Even as a leader, you may be placed on a team 
But it is your responsibility being placed on a team or placed around someone to know the attention of the one that you're around. It is your responsibility to know who's on that team with you and to know who can do what on that team and who is there for the right reasons and who's there for the wrong. In some cases you pick those, but then there are some cases you are picked to be on the team. And if you're picked to be on the team and there's someone already on the team that's motives are impure or not clear, clean, then it's your job to know that one and mark this person knowing that I know what this individual is here for. Jesus so shows his 12. But within the 12, we, all, we know that one was, did not have pure intentions. So that leaves 11, right? Out of, out of them, there was only three that Jesus allowed within his inner circle. Okay? He didn't, he didn't only know the intentions of Judas, but he also knew the attentions of the other disciples as well. He knew what he knew them before he even chose them. Okay, so it's, it, it, it's very important that you understand that how now how is that possible? Because he knew the spirit that they were operating in. You have to understand the spirit that's op you, that people are operating in. This is where our discernment kick in. This is the reason where someone, someone says, I would like to be part of what you're doing, or I'd like to be in your life, or I'd like to be around you. This is when your discernment kick in, and you have to figure out why. See, sometimes it's rude to, say, to flat out say, right, why? We, we don't do that. We, we, but we, what we do do is discern the spirit and figure out why. Mm. What is your motive? What are you trying to do? Are you here to take over my team? Are you here to replace me? Are you here to hurt me? Because this don't, like I said, this don't only regard as in leadership, but it also regards as picking up spouse. Are you here to hurt me? Are you here to be in my life for a long time? Or are you here just for the moment? Are you just trying to get what you want from me? Or are you, are you here for real? We have to know the intentions of people if we want to be true kingdom serving people of God. If I'm going to complete what God called me to complete, I got to protect the vision he gave me. And I got to understand what part or what role do you play in that vision? Mm. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's important. That's important. Now let's look at this because we know that before all, Jesus chose them, right? So let's look at the word chose. The word chose means to pick out or to select. Pick out or to select someone or something as being part, I'm sorry, as being the best of most appropriate or the most appropriate of two or more alternatives. Now that's interesting. Why is that interesting? Because what, what, this, what this definition is telling me that out of three or four or five, I was selected out of those five because of the role that I'm going to play in this position. Now, 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 now let's tell me this wrong because what people think just because we were selected, all of a sudden that means I'm better than everyone that was in my role in, in, in the same category. And that's not, that's not true. You just fit the role of what needs to take place in this vision. Amen. It doesn't mean you're better because in that, in, in another vision, they could be, they could be selected to do what they need to do. Get it? So we, we can't look at it that way, okay? Now, let's look at it this way. Let me, let me break it down like this. Peter was among other fishermen when he was called, right? There was other fishermen around. It wasn't about his ability to fish because there was other fishermen, right? Or that he was the best fisherman because the Bible never said he was the best fisherman, okay? So he was selected because one, Jesus knew he would follow him because he's when he told him to come, he came. So he knew he would follow him. So he knew he had a spirit of obedience. I don't, you don't need anyone on your team that can't obey. Okay? And ain't willing to follow. Okay? Two, the other thing was that he was also willing to learn. You don't want to get wrapped up with someone that figured they already know it. 
They already got everything down pat. They already know how to run your program better than you. That makes it difficult in order for you to do what God needs you to do when somebody already think they know what to do. Does that make any sense? And a lot of times what we do when we, when, they, when we think like that, we put God in a box and wonder why it can't flow the way God wanted it to flow because we got our own uh, agenda and our own way of doing things instead of letting God do it. Okay? So you need people that is willing to learn and willing to let God have his way in your group or in your life. Does that make any sense to anybody? Okay? So, with that being said, Jesus never saw him prior. Now think about this now. He never saw Peter prior to selecting him. He didn't see him before then. Okay? He wasn't chose because of his outward appearance, but Jesus saw his heart. He saw his spirit. Does that make any sense? As a leader, we have to be careful about putting people in position because we fear loss or we fear losing. A lot of times, I, I, I've been in churches, I've been to different places where I saw that people would put people in, in, in leadership uh, positions simply because they're related to them, simply because of this or that, but they don't have them in position because they qualify. They have them in position a lot of times because they figure if I don't put them in position, they're going to walk out the door. That's not a reason to put people in position because what we do sometimes, we put people in the wrong position because then when they get in that position, they make a mess. I told y'all often, several times before I got saved, I, went, I was invited to a church, I went to the church, the usher of the church was so mean and so nasty that I didn't even enjoy the service. I was so offended by the usher at the front door that it didn't matter what the pastor was saying, I wasn't even listening. I was so offended. I was so offended that after service, the young lady, which was the pastor's daughter, who invited me to the church, I had to tell her. And when I told her, she took me straight to the pastor, and the pastor just started to apologize. He had no idea that this lady was doing this at the door. Come to find out later on that she was related to him. And she was at the door simply because of relationship and not there because of qualification. And we make the mistake a lot of times of doing it because of loss. Mm -hmm. And what's really sad about it, I found later on that the, that church had issues with growing. And I wondered to myself, did it not grow because of who they had at the door? Because I'm gonna tell you, and I was an unbeliever at the time, I would tell you, I didn't ever wanna come back there. I felt so offended and so ashamed that I didn't want to go back. Mm -hmm. This is why it's so dangerous having the wrong people in the wrong positions. Mm -hmm. Because you've got the wrong people in the wrong position, they can stump out the whole vision that God given you. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. We're not looking for perfection, mm -hmm. but we are looking for intentions. We're looking for pure attention. There's no such thing of, uh, of perfect people. We know that. There ain't no perfect person. The only person, per, perfect person was Jesus himself, right? right? So we don't look at, that. we're not looking for a perfect person. We, I know you're going to have flaws. You need to know that people going to come on your team are going to have flaws. You need to know people that are going to come in your life is going to have flaws. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about intentions. My, my question is, what are your, where is your heart is at? What are, your, what are your thought process when it comes to me? Do you look at my program and say that it's not godly? Do you look at it and say that you can do it better? Are you looking at it with the wrong intention? Are you looking at it saying that if I get in his life or her life, then my life will turn out better? Not, saying, not, not realizing that your life is already should be already that way in God before that individual even come to your life. The mistake that a lot of single people make is the fact that they're looking for somebody to make them happy. The problem of the nature is you should be happy in the Lord before they even come. Okay. If anything, they should come to help you maintain your happiness, never come to make you happy. Right. A man can't do that. A woman can't do that. Right. Come on, somebody. Mm. Go to Proverbs 23 and 6. Proverbs 20, 23 and 6 says this. Do not eat the bread of a selfish man or desire his delicacies. For as he thinketh think in his heart, so is he in his behavior. 
one who manipulates. He says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you, but is begrudging the cost. So you have people that will pretend, so what it's saying is that he will pretend, they will pretend that they care. They will pretend that they're part of the program. They will pretend that they're part of the vision. They will pretend that they want to be with you. They will pretend that they want to be part of your world just to come in and cause a problem and a mess. Mm. Because inside of their hearts, if you knew their thoughts, and a lot of times we get upset when God starts to remove people, but you don't understand. He removed them because he saw the inward. While you still looking at the outward, thinking that this is okay person, God already saw their heart and said, no, 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 you don't want to be bothered with this one. You have no idea the, 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 the thoughts and the plans and the plots of that individual. They were going to destroy the vision that I have in your life. Mm -hmm. They were going to destroy what I was trying to do. Come on, somebody. So we got to get this. We got to get this. And why this is so important? Because as leaders, we have to make better decisions. As leaders, we can't make emotional decisions. We can't make familiar decisions. We can't make decisions out of impulse. If I'm going to make a decision, then I'm going to have to discern through God. Because only God knows the heart of a man. And I need to ask God myself, Lord, is this is the one to be on my team. If this is the one that should be in my life, if this is the one that I can't share this, these informa this information with, notice, out of, tw out of 12, only three got to see the innermost parts of Christ. Why? Something to think about. Come on, stand with me. Don't have a vision by God, a purpose in your life. And if you are breathing, there is a purpose for your life. Don't let the enemy tell you this. Say one, say, God, there is a purpose. God has a purpose for each and every person. The problem is, is that the enemy don't want us to fulfill that purpose. So he placed in our lives people and things that can stop us from fulfilling what it is that God wants us to do. You have to be careful about who you select. You have to know the motives of that individual. Let your discernment work. Let it kick in. There's a Holy Spirit on the inside of each and every one of us. And that Holy Spirit is there to guide, to direct, and to lead us. You can always ask to confirm, is this the one, Lord? Don't just go by how you look. Ladies, don't go by how tall he is. Brothers, don't go by how her body is shaped. Go by, can they handle my vision? Can they handle the vision on my life? Can they handle the purpose that God has given me? If they can handle it, then that's possibly the one. If can they handle this, uh, what I have to do, part of this team of this, of this ministry or this project, can they handle it? Do I got the right people that will handle this the, the right way or is this the wrong individual? You got to know that before selecting. We can't select and get, get our feelings all involved and then in the middle of that, then ask God, God is that the one? God is just the one. Why? Because your feelings mess with, it's your will, and your will mess with his will. Remember now, God is not going to override your will. So if your will is in the way, then how can God tell you the truth and you accept it? Because your will, we want what we want. Our heart will want what our hearts want, 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 want. So a lot of times what we want, we can want it so badly that we can't even hear God when he says, not this way. Mm. Not that way. Come on, somebody. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for this word. We thank you, O oh God, for these leaders. We thank you, O oh God, for those leaders and those believers that have tuned in tonight. Lord, I pray that something was said that will help them to understand themselves better, that will help them to make better decisions, that will help them to be better leaders and better believers. Lord, I pray that, Lord God, that you would just move on from that person right now. 
and that you will help them to see the truth and to know the truth. Lord, we thank you for it, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And before I leave you, we are the conference, the In His Present Conference, Charlotte. We already did Detroit. Charlotte. We're getting ready to do the one in Charlotte. October 22nd and the 23rd. Don't quote me on it. What is it? Is it 21st or the 22nd? 22nd and 21st and 22nd. Okay. 21st and 22nd. Sorry. 21st and 22nd, Charlotte, North Carolina. Give us a, a shout out on here. DM me and I'll give you, I'll give you all the information that you need. Uh, if you want to join us there, please do. That would be awesome. We'd love to see you there. Also, too, listen, if you're not part of our YouTube channel, here's an opportunity to be part of it. We're going to go ahead and share the link. Share the link in the YouTube link in, in, the, in the comments. We're going to share that link for you tonight so that you can jump in and not just get pieces, but be able to get the full effect of our ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for you, and we give God the glory and honor and praise. Just give it a minute so that we can get that link in for you real quick before we go. Remember, it's October the 21st and 22nd. Join us. I mean, we had a time in the last one, and we got several others coming. Hey, just be part. Just come on, be part, and watch what God does. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you on the next one. God bless you.